So yeah, there's going to be back-to-back -back, uh, presentations from the NPL. Uh, Hibak is going to start talking about uh, TK400 and iron separation, which is indeed, I think, a very, very interesting presentation. So the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Um, hopefully you should be able to see my um, presentation up. Yeah, all good. All good. Excellent. Um, yeah, so hopefully this talk will follow up nicely with what was presented by, by um, Maya um, earlier. Um, so this will be um, just a few short updates on um, the work previously done by um, my colleague uh, Peter Ivanov, who showed that um, in addition to protactinium separation, TK400 um, resin works very well for, for IM55 um, separation. So I'll give a bit of an um, update on um, some of the characterization work that we've done on the resin um, and the um, corresponding distribution plots that we've generated from, from that work. Um, and most of this will be kind of like what was mentioned by, by Maya, Maya earlier, it will be some of the um, things that will need to be considered um, and hopefully be worked on by, by us. Um, for, the, for the method. Um, just a bit of a short uh, overview first about what the analysis requirements are for, for IM55. I'm sure a lot of this is already um, familiar with you all, but um, just give a quick, a quick overview. So um, stable iron is a huge component of the materials that are present within um, the nuclear uh, facility. Um, so we'll end up producing quite a lot of iron-55 um, on, on site. And measurement of iron-55 is, is required both within routine environmental uh, monitoring, but also within um, nuclear decommissioning. One of the challenges for determining um, iron-55 and preparing it is that to effectively measure it, it needs you need to be able to separate um, competing uh, radionuclides that are, that are present. Um, and most of the work, um, most of the separation work that's been done um, so far is aimed at addressing uh, this, this challenge, so how to best separate iron from, from other uh, radionuclides. Um, so some of the current methods that are available are, are summarised here, which were also presented in the earlier, earlier talk. But um, most of the methods are, are a combination of, of, of the use of anion exchange uh, resins in combination with the true resin. Um, however, as was mentioned um, in the talks earlier, and I think uh, was also covered very nicely in Triscam's user group meeting last year, was that TK400 is um, a good alternative option for, for iron um, separation. Um, so before I talk about TK400, I just want to give a bit of an overview of, of true resin and why it's well suited for, for iron separation. Um, so just in terms of the extraction system, it's a combination of uh, CMPO with TPP uh, present. But the main use of the resin is for separation of uh, transuranium elements, so tetravalent uh, thorium and plutonium is the main use uh, for the resin. But as you can see um, on the figure on the right there, if you look at the uh, distribution uh, coefficient of, of, of uh, several um, elements on true resin, you can see that under high nitric conditions, you can have a very nice uh, and high retention of iron with dilute nitric being well suited for, for elution. So true resin is a well-established method for iron separation and, and measurement. However, some of the developments that have been made by TK by Triscam on TK400 um, show that um, a better or maybe a, a uh, yeah, a better alternative could potentially be TK400 to help deal with the capacity issue that was mentioned by, by um, Maya earlier. So the main uh, kind of component, uh, as was shown earlier, is that it's an octanol extractant. Um, and in addition to iron, uh, the suitable uh, suitability for the resin is for protactinium, which was work led by my colleague Peter Ivanov that showed 
that's well suited for that. Um, and uh, there's also uh, some retention of gallium and niobium um, on TK400 resin. Um, so initial work was done by my colleague to show that there is high retention of, of iron on TK400, but um, some of the work that we've done recently is to see um, in addition to, to iron, whether or not if uh, other competing elements, so beta emitters such as strontium and nickel might have some retention on the resin. So what we've done recently is to um, repeat um, batch studies on TK400 to see um, what the retention of group one and group two elements are on TK400 um, in addition to uh, lanthanides and actinides. Um, so over here, we can see some of the recent results that we've um, obtained um, using um, mass spec to determine the distribution coefficient. Um, so as was known previously, there is high retention of iron under high hydrochloric conditions. But in addition to this, we were able to confirm that um, there's low, low retention of strontium on the resin, which is ideal. And you're able to elute iron using dilute uh, hydrochloric or, or nitric. Um, and in addition to that, um, some of our more recent work has shown that um, there's also low retention of nickel on, on the resin, which makes it ideal for, for use in, um, in a separation scheme, which might contain other, other beta emitters. Um, some things which I think have, were previously mentioned in the, uh, the, um, in the Triscam user group meeting, was that there is retention of, of molybdenum on the resin, which could be, could be an issue. Um, and in addition to that, under low hydrochloric conditions, there is some uh, retention of bismuth. Um, so this has sort of led us to think about um, if there are alternative eluting agents that we could potentially um, use. Um, but I'll hopefully kind of go over that in a bit more detail in the following uh, slides. Um, so from the initial results that we've had for um, the distribution coefficient, we were able to uh, propose a um, separation scheme that um, we um, uh, tested. Um, so we tested this initially with just a, a, a blank sample containing nine molar hydrochloric that was spiked with a 100 Becquerel iron um, 55 source. And we wanted to see if, uh, confirm if uh, dilute nitric and hydrochloric were, um, uh, were able to work for um, liquid sint measurement. Um, so we tested this initially with just iron 55 um, with the plan to sort of do ongoing work uh, to see what the effect of nickel 63 and strontium 90 would be. Um, unfortunately for today's uh, group meeting of uh we've only got the results for for iron itself to to show um but we um have uh ongoing work uh so to sort of do this with with um other other beta emitters within a mix um so this is some of the initial results that we have so we've got high uh, recoveries um but we want to sort of um obviously extend this and do further work um, and, and see what the performance of TK400 resin is with um, a mixture of, of beta emitters uh, being present. Um, so hopefully it will be more, more results to share with uh, Stefan and the team um, for this. But um, in terms of uh, next steps, I think what would be really good is for us to kind of look to see if there are alternative looting agents which could be used. Um, so one where but we're testing at the moment is ammonium fluoride to see if that could um, ensure uh, that we have uh, higher recoveries and could also help avoid some co um, elution issues, um, which uh, I think was shown by by Ord in a in a previous um, user group meeting. Um, and in addition to this, I think uh, a lot of this will require validation on real, real samples. So I think looking into the capacity and seeing what could be done to resolve that would be something that would be very, very keen to, to work on and update. Um, just come on um, soon. 
So, so yeah, I think as a next step, we'll want to look at alternative eluting agents um, and um, see what, how the uh, how the performance of TK400 as it is. Um, so I think that's sort of the end of my presentation. So it's just a very short update on what's been done since uh, Peter's um, work on, on TK400 resin. Um, a lot of this work was um, done this year with uh, a master's student, uh, Dilak, who had one of vastly sort of knowledge. Um, obviously, I also want to thank uh, Triscam for a lot of the help that uh, they've provided um, us. Um, and I want to thank you for, for listening. So yeah, if there's any, any questions, please um, send uh, through uh, a, a message or raise your hand. And I'd be happy, happy to take them. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much for a very nice presentation. Indeed, Tessa, I think especially working on, on more real samples and, and, and checking what's happening with, with real matrix, that's going to be quite a, quite a challenge. Um, but it, it, it does look quite quite interesting, Byron, so far. Yeah, very good work. Thank you. And looking forward to continuing that. Yes, yeah, hopefully we could work on, on this a bit more and, and, and see see what the method looks like. Yeah. Okay, so are there any questions? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a really tricky one. Do you want to answer? So, yeah, how to determine the uh, the, the iron capacity on TK400? Uh, that's uh, please. Maybe you can start, and I'll. Yeah, I think um, so. I think not really looked into this previously. I think a lot of this was uh, done by by Ward, um, but I think we we're hoping to maybe just sort of see what. An increase of the yeah, iron concentrations would look like, and then measuring it by by mass back and seeing how how that looks. But I think probably Stefan might have a, a better <laughs> better idea. It's not necessarily better, but there's really like more or less two schools that you find in literature that's uh, determining KD in, in when increasing amounts of iron are there, and then checking at what point you get into that into that plateau. Uh, so that's mm -hmm. something that that's fairly often done. That can if not so good results sometimes, so that's that's a bit difficult. Orbit has usually been doing a complete sort of saturation of the, the columns, so really saturate until nothing, nothing else gets, gets on the column anymore. Then just dilute and and quantify the amount of, of iron that is uh, that's on the column. Um, so at the end of the day, it's a little bit to see a question. And <laughs> it's a bit the question of, of what what do you define how what you want to know as a, in terms of capacity. It's indeed. The more iron you have, the more iron you will take up. That, that's something that's that, that has been been shown. So to completely overload the columns tends to give very very high capacities that you might not necessarily find in your real samples. And in addition, in a real sample you do have stuff that will interfere with your sample. So uh, the, the the old approach of, of of having a maximum capacity and then defining something like a working capacity, which is about half. Uh, that probably makes quite a lot of sense. Uh, feeling is not too many of the of the uh, the, the, the impurities or the, the interference in, in in a lot of the samples would tend to interfere too strongly. So you should get a, a quite nice high working capacity, but still, the yeah, capacity is, is always been a, a tricky one to uh, to tackle. Okay, so there's another another question. Um, yes, I think. Um... Oh. For this, we've, I think for, for other resins, I think there is, uh, has been looked into uh, having uh, different combined uh, elution agents uh, together, but it's not something I've, I've looked into for, for TK400. I think for for us, I think we're quite interested in, in seeing how fluoride com um, complexation with the iron would work. Might be something quite quite nice to see if uh, if that leads to um, a more effective way of us stripping the iron from from the resin. And um, yeah. yeah, I think that's something we would want to definitely try and sort of yeah rule out and see if it does lead to an improvement. Yeah, definitely. So for the people that are not on the chat, so there's a question about uh, using uh, nitric acid uh, and hydrogen peroxide or HCl, uh, HCl HF uh, for elution. So my feeling is. Uh, Hydrogen peroxide is probably going to be contra, contraproductive in a way. Iron three seems to be much stronger retained than iron two. So I think 
uh, just using a, a, a the reducing agent doesn't seem to be enough. Iron 2 seems to be quite well retained too. Uh, HF is definitely going to work. And I think in one of the last users group meetings, there was some data shown by, uh, by Chris Gillian on the use of HF. And yeah, I think he's shown that, that that's a good one. HF is probably going to be, uh, besides the fact that it's not nice to work with, um, that's going to be quite quite efficient for, for illusion. Yeah, yeah. So I think if, if we find ammonium fluoride to work well, then that would be a very nice uh, nice solution uh, for us to try. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's, a, yeah that's a better one. Uh, yeah. It's indeed quite, quite difficult for a lot of labs to work with HF. Okay, um, are there any more questions at the moment? If there are no more questions, thank you very much again. Good luck for the next so experiment. Thank you for the opportunity for, to present. And yeah, hopefully we'll speak soon with, with updates. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, we stay in Teddington and we just uh, hand the presentation over to, to Ben.